I want to say, call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, and that's all praises to the Heavenly Father, who the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ. His real name is Yahweh Shah, the Hebrew. And um, today I just want to talk about um, something, eating the right dinner, right? Or eating the most important dinner of your life. Uh, because right now, amidst, you know, this so called epidemic, this so called plague that's going on, uh, while we watch the most highest judgment being poured out on this earth, uh, a lot of people are, are, are flooding the grocery stores frantically, trying to figure out what they're going to eat for dinner, you know, for this so called month of, of quarantine that's going to happen, right? But I don't really give a damn about this earthly food anymore. Right. I seriously just honestly desire this spiritual, well, not spiritual, I, I desire this supper that Yahweh Shah has in place for us that's coming up. If we're faithful, to continue to keep these commandments and be sincere in, in, in mind and in heart and, and, and try to win souls. He says that he that is winning souls is a wise man and we know that we keep these laws and it makes us wise. As long as we continue to be faithful and endure, we're going to eat this, this marriage supper of the Lamb. This is the most important meal that you ever eat. So forget about your damn canned beans, forget about the toilet tissue, forget about the chips and all the other things that everybody else is stocking up on. Feast upon this word of the Most High that He's already given us, and then we're going to feast. We're going to have that other Passover, right? We're going to have that, that marriage supper of the Lamb. So let's get this in uh, Matthew 22. We're going to look at a uh, parable that Yahweh Shah gave. From the top? Yeah, from the top. This is Matthew chapter 22 from the top. And Yahweh Shah answered, you want me to just say the regular name? Yeah. God. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven. It's like unto a certain king. So he's telling us, right, in this parable, what I'm about to tell you, this is what the kingdom is like. So if we want to know what the kingdom is like, we need to take heed to this parable, right? It's like unto a certain king. Like unto a certain king, uh-huh. So we know that the king of, of the kingdom, right, is Yahweh, which made a marriage for his son. For his son. Who's his son? Yahweh Shah. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. So he sent for his servants. So now we're about to figure out um, what, uh, give me Revelation 19 and 7. All right. It's the book of Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. So the marriage of the lamb is come. Who's the lamb? Yahweh Shah. What's the marriage? Us being joined unto him, right? And so this is this parable is about this parable is about to explain to you um what this what this marriage and what this marriage feast is all about, right? You got a precept? What's going on with it? This is 2 Corinthians chapter eleven. Oh, I was gonna get to that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh -huh. uh, so let's get the let's who, who's the servant? So we got Yahweh shot. We understand that that's the lamb that Revelation's talking about, the, the lamb that's that's got this uh wedding feast prepared for us. Now let's see who the servants are that's gonna be calling or who's gonna be bidding. Uh, this, this certain group of people to partake into this. Give me Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Whoever gets there first. We're about to see who these servants are. This is Amos chapter 3 verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. His servants the prophets, right? So everything the Most High does before he does it, He's, going to he's not going to leave us in a state of oblivion. He's not going to leave his people in a state of oblivion. Now, we know that there are certain things that the secret things just dwell with the Most High. But things that he wants us to understand, he's going to give it into the minds of the prophets. And then we're going to, we're going to be out here in the streets and give him this, feed, give him this food unto the, uh, unto the sheep, right? So this, the servants are his prophets. Now, give me uh, Matthew 22, verse, uh, where are you at? Verse 3. Yeah. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden. So he's sending forth his prophets to call them who's bidden. Who was bidden? What's another word for bidden? Called, right? Give me Isaiah 48 and 10. We're about to see who was called. We're about to see who was called to this marriage supper. The whole world, you, you look into you, you listen to the Christian church, they're gonna tell you that the whole world's called to partake into this feast. Nah, no strangers allowed. There's a lot of strange damn people out here. Probably like her. Okay. Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but no, I'm sorry, Isaiah 48 and 12, 48 and 45 and 12, 48 and 12, so, Isaiah 48 and 12, hearken unto me, O Jacob, 
in Israel, my call. Israel, my call, my bidden. Israel is his bidden, right? So that's who is bidden to this marriage feast. Now, give me uh, back to Matthew 22. Huh. Matthew 22, verse 3. And sent forth the servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. And they would not come. We always give our, 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 our Lord, our, our, our God, a deaf ear, right? It's like, hey, come partake into this feast with me. Ah, no. You know, when we, when we try to bid and, and call our brothers and sisters that walk up and down the street, hey, bro, you want, you want to feast up on, on, on these words that the Most High gave you? Nah, I'm good. You know, just like brother Jake that just walked past, like, nah, the Bible ain't for me, man. You know, okay. Many call for your chosen, right? Come Verse 4, again he sent forth, again he sent forth other servants. So now he's going to send forth more prophets, right? Hopefully that these prophets will get to, to uh, these rebellious people. Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Come unto the marriage. He done kill his oxen, his fatlings. And this goes to show you that there's going to be more sacrifice in the kingdom, right? Uh, now give me Revelation 19 and 9. I got that. You got another precept? This is Psalms chapter 23, verse 5. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So the Most High, he's preparing that table right now while we're in the midst of our enemies, right? Right. <laughs> right. While we're in the midst of Babylon, man, getting oppressed, getting destroyed, getting gunned down, right? Worrying about how we're going to pay our bills, right? Which I ain't worried about no more. We're about to come to the end. Fuck all this, right? <laughs> but that, and how's he doing that? Through us? Exactly, through us. I'm going to read again. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. Forever. That's the goal. That's the mark, man. Like, once, <laughs> if we can make it through this parable, right? This this parable that he's given us in Matthew 22, if we can make it through that in life, man, that that is that's the pinnacle. That is the pinnacle, right? That's the terminal of this, of this uh, parable. Uh, go back to Matthew 22. Matthew 22 and verse 5. But they made light of this and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. And the remnant took his servants, took his prophets, treated them spitefully and slew them. Somebody give me Acts uh, 7 and 52. This is, this is how they always treated the prophets, right? But it's no, no new thing under the sun. This is Matthew 23 and 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered with her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. See? We would not. But they always destroyed the prophets, man. The, the very people that's trying to save your soul, the very people that just want to partake into this feast with you, with with your Howard shot, man. But we treat them spitefully. The same way how we treat the prophets, we treat the men of the Lord, is the same way how we're going to treat our big brother, your Howard shot. Right? So what makes what makes you think you're gonna be worthy to partake into that? Alright? Uh give me a, a yeah, back to Matthew twenty two. Uh, Matthew twenty two and verse seven. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. So when now when Yahweh heard this, he was wroth. Now what's he gonna do? And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So the, the same Israelites that was called, that was that that was called to this marriage, to this marriage feast, they were not worthy. Give me Matthew 10 and uh Matthew 10 and 11. Matthew 10 and 11. They're not worthy. This the book of Matthew. This the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 11. Uh -huh. And in and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter. And this is what we're doing. We enter into the, all these, we got camps established and, and pretty much all over the world now, right? Acquire who in who in it is worthy and there and, and there abide till ye go thence. And acquire who is worthy. Who is worthy to actually come and sup with the lamb, right? We just can't have no regular Joe Blow. 
for the most high, he's going to be filtering, right? He's going to be filtering out the, the weed and the tears. He's going to be filtering out the just and the unjust, right? But it's our job to go ahead and come on out here and bid whoever's going to listen. Salah. I mean, try. Matthew, Matthew 22, verse 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. And that's what we're doing. We're going out here into the highways and the byways, right? Faithfully, day in, day out. Uh, corona, no Corona, right? <laughs> we, we're going to do it. Now give me Second Corinthians 11 and 2, you know? Yeah, mask on, mask off, right? We just, man, we have we have great examples of, of our forefathers in this Bible that has shown us the way, shown us what to do. And, and our uh, beloved brother Paul, this is what he's done too. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to, to one husband. He's been calling us to that one husband, to the marriage, right? That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Hamashiach. To a chaste virgin to Hamashiach, right? But now we done polluted ourselves, become whores, right? By, by you know, spiritual fornication, making idols, making other gods in our hearts, making our family gods, you know, making them our, our idols, making this world, the worldly things our idols. When we just lose now on this on this great feast that we could be partaking in soon. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, mm -hmm. both bad and good. Both bad and good. So not just any, I mean, not just the good people and not just so-called the, the, the bad ones, but both of them. Mm -hmm. And the wedding was furnished with guests. Uh-huh. So now give me um give me a uh, Matthew 13, 47. All right? Because this is also what the kingdom of heaven is like. But when, when Yahweh Shah comes, he's going to be thrusting in that sickle, separating. Right. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. So the kingdom of heaven is like, is, is like a net, right? That was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels and cast the bad away. So the kingdom of heaven is like a net drawn into the sea, right? Just like us. We're out here in, in the sea of people, right? And we're trying to, we're, we're fishing for men. While we're fishing for men, we're catching the good and we're catching the bad. But here it said that while they brought it up to shore, they're going to cast out some, some of the good fish over there and the bad fish over there, right? So when your howl shot comes, he's going to thrust in that sickle, separate the, the wheat, Separate the tear, separate the just, and separate the unjust. Right? You're worthy for the. Uh, you're worthy for my my Passover. You're worthy for this this supper. You're not. That's more. Next one, uh, verse forty nine. So shall it be at the end of the world. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked uh, from amongst the just, and shall cast cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Mm. That's second death. Yeah, we don't want that out. Lord willing, I'm a part of the lake. Lord willing, all of us are part of the lake. I want to see all y'all brothers up there. Hey. Lord willing, Lord willing. Hey, this is Matthew 22, verse 11. And when the king, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Uh oh. You know, you got it. What you got? Yeah, you don't want to be caught without that wedding garment, man. This is Revelation 19 and 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That's it. That's the type. That's the, uh, give me Isaiah 61 and 10. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the garments that you want to have on. Because as we read the, uh, I, I think the next verse, he asked him, hey, how come you don't have on your raiment? The man was confounded. He ain't had nothing to say. So we don't want to be dumbfounded when the Most High says, "Hey, where's your wedding garment?" Oh, uh, uh, no, man. Now is the time to be putting on that wedding garment, right? And Isaiah 61 and 10 tells you exactly what this wedding garment is. 